Covalent bonding is a concept that seems pretty simple at the very beginning, Share, the sharing of electrons. Uh, we then go, once the concept is introduced, Lewis structures then show how are the atoms connected to each other? Well, is this atom connected to that atom and so forth? Well, once the students are able to draw Lewis structures and they understand that Lewis structures involve the sharing or covalent bonding, the sharing of electrons, then it's time to take a look at the actual bonds. I have here uh, fluorine, diatomic molecule, and its respective Lewis structure uh, shown below. Over here, I have this compound, and I've drawn the Lewis structure here. Students should be comfortable at this point drawing those things. Then I tell the students I want to focus on the shared pair of electrons. And sometimes my students struggle if I show them all these electrons, which ones are the shared, which ones are the unshared. It seems like a very simple concept, but something that I've done that seems to help is to say I want to focus on this pair of electrons. And here's how I'm going to make sure that all of my students focus on those electrons. I'm going to erase all other electrons so that they have nothing else to really be looking for. This pair of electrons. Now, a definition that seems very abstract to students would be electronegativity. Electronegativity, the ability of an atom to attract electrons to itself. The ability of an atom to attract or pull electrons towards itself. Well, we're going to take a look at these electrons right here. And I have over here a visual model of that. I've got two ring stands here anchored down by textbooks. Here's a fluorine, here's a fluorine, and these two styrofoam balls represent the shared pair of electrons between this fluorine and this fluorine. Well, if electronegativity refers to the atom's ability to attract electrons to itself, as we look at this, we can say, well, this fluorine is, has a very high electronegativity, and it's trying to pull the electrons closer to it. But much like its twin brother, this fluorine also has a high electronegativity, and it's trying to attract those electrons to itself as well. And so what we have here is kind of like a tug of war. I want it, you want it, 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 I want it, you want it. And what we see, equal sharing. The electrons are located equally between the two fluorines. Equal sharing. Equal sharing. So at this point, Equal sharing occurs there. Well, if we look at this molecule here, and again, to help my students focus, I want to focus just on these two electrons. So I am going to eliminate everything else to help my students focus on the electrons of interest. Those electrons. If we look at the periodic table, we can see fluorine, where it is, carbon, where it is. We see carbon has a lower electronegativity. It's not as able to pull electrons to itself at nearly the same strength that a fluorine can. The model helps the students, I think, to see this. Here's my carbon, here's my fluorine, my shared pair of electrons. Most definitely shared. We're still talking about covalent bonding, but we know that fluorine has a much greater electronegativity, a stronger ability to attract electrons to itself. And so when the tug of war officially starts, I want it, you want it, I want it, you want it, I want it, you want it, I want it, you want it. What we see is that the fluorine is able to attract the electrons much stronger than is the carbon. And so we have sharing, but yet it is unequal sharing. Unequal sharing. Okay. 
okay? Unequally shared electrons. From this, what I like about the way we have it arranged here and the way I do it in my classroom, by anchoring this down to the table, it frees up our hands as teachers. We're able to point to each thing. It's not a once stretched with your hands and then set down. It's out there and we can refer back to it. Surprisingly, students a year later, if they've had me in the first year chemistry class, a year later in AP will say, oh, I remember the rubber bands demo. Yeah, that whole equal, unequal sharing. And, and again, we're taking something, electronegativity, and if you just think about the definition, the uh, atom's ability to attract electrons to itself, we can take that abstract definition and we can put it into a concrete model where they might, may say thicker rubber band, thinner rubber band. It really is that simple, and we can go forward with that in terms of talking about polar bonds and nonpolar bonds, but a very easy, uh, inexpensive electronegativity demo device. So. The electronegativity demonstration device is very easily constructed. It consists of two styrofoam balls, okay, found at a number of different art supply places, uh, rubber bands, and two jumbo-sized paper clips. Now this particular model that I'm showing would be the unequal sharing version because it's got a thicker rubber band here and a thinner rubber band connected to the other one. Attaching the styrofoam balls is rather simple. What we do is we simply take the ball as we would purchase it and we can use a utility knife like so to cut a narrow groove in the ball like so. That groove then allows the paper clip to slide in and it stays on there. And this one has already been sliced. Again, a utility knife cuts a path through and then it's able to slide right over top. Just like that. And then as we move it, the styrofoam balls stay, stay put. And it turns out using the styrofoam balls is very important because in our students' minds, electrons are little particles with a minus sign on them. And so it's really important to go beyond just having a paper clip there. 